Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Glasgow, Kentucky. This our recorded service for April 30th, 2023. This is our fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. And so I welcome you again if you're watching by way of Glasgow Electric Plant Board Channel 6 at 1130. Thank you. If you have just finished watching uh, Glasgow Baptist and are carrying over on Electric Plant Board, welcome. And those of you watching by YouTube, uh, YouTube you can watch at your convenience at any time you'd like to after 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Welcome to you. Um, some announcements to make before I get to my passage and message for today. Let's see, um, today in person we have a special treat. Um, the choir from Taylor Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Bowling Green. Their choir is singing today at First Presbyterian in Glasgow. We're delighted to welcome them and um, and uh, we're delighted to have them join us. It's, it's great to have visitors and to make new friends. And speaking of making new friends, you're welcome to come any Sunday you like at 10 o'clock. Join us. We're at, we're at uh, 200 East Washington Street across from Crow Funeral Home on one side, the fire station on the other side, and South Central Bank on the other side. You'll find us. Come see us anytime. We would love to welcome you and to greet you 10 o'clock any Sunday. This is our fifth Sunday also in April, one of the few months that has, that has five Sundays in it. And next month, May, will be, will be a big month you know, for all of us. Well, the Derby, if you're into Kentucky Derby, that's next weekend, then Mother's Day after that. So we have a lot going on in May, and I'm excited for the new month. But let's close out April in style. Today we're going to be in John's Gospel. If you want to find it in your home Bible to follow with me, uh, please do. It's John chapter 10. And as you find it, this service, like last week's, I'm going to include some music that was recorded at church recently. So you can see some of our local musicians uh, performing around this message. It may have another surprise or two in this 30 minutes. But, um, but we're going to be in John's Gospel. And, and today's topic, we're going, to talk about, we're going to talk about an abundant life. Uh, you know, we, we all want an abundant life, right? We all want to live life to the fullest. And throughout history, there's been, there's been many, um, many products, many uh, objects that have uh, made statements of being able to provide abundant life. For example, I am a frequent visitor to St. Augustine, Florida. My oldest son goes to school there. And in St. Augustine, a tourist can visit the Fountain of Youth. It is still here in St. Augustine. And so if you want to go there, and people have been looking for this thing right, for hundreds of years because the Fountain of Youth can help you have life more abundantly by keeping you younger. Um, closer in history from the uh, Ponce de Leon's discovery of the Fountain of Youth, in the last 100 or so years, there was a product developed that was promoted to make your life better. Um, it was called, I think, Dr. Carter's Liver Pills. And if you took Carter's liver pills, it helped you uh, to have a healthier body, to have a more abundant life. In fact, there was a saying that went along with that, that developed over the last 100 years, right? I'm sure you've heard it. If, if someone has a lot of something, you would say, well, they have more of that than Carter has liver pills. That's the, the saying that came from that product. And even more recently, as I watch TV uh, late night, sometimes I'll see these commercials for products that are boasted as being 
uh, able to make your life more abundant for you. Uh, super beets, you know, the pill that has the, uh, uh, the powder form of beets, if you take that, that, that makes your life better. And if you remember this, about 10, was it 10 or 15 years ago, there was a drink that it was everywhere called Zija. Z recall that? Zija? People sold Zija because Zija, when you drank it, uh, was able to give you a, a more abundant way to live life, you know, healthier, right? So there's, been, there's, there's products throughout history from the fountain of youth uh, to Zija and, and things in between that have been promoted to make your life better, healthier, more abundant. But today I want us to think about what truly, truly gives us an abundant life. Is it a drink? Is it a pill? What is it? Join me now in John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. And we'll get some words of wisdom here from Jesus. This, this is a passage that mostly, if you have a red letter Bible, mostly they're red letters. The, these are the words of Jesus given to a crowd, mostly Pharisees. And Jesus talks about a familiar analogy, uh, him as a shepherd, or he uses sheep a lot as a uh, metaphor for other things because people understood what it meant to be a shepherd or, or how sheep acted. And this is another example of Jesus teaching. Listen to these words, John chapter 10, verses one through 10. Very truly, I Oh, by the way, this is the New International Version. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech. But the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. So the Pharisees are hearing this, but they're not getting it. They don't, you know, they don't understand it fully. So Jesus continues. He says it in a bit of a different way. Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, where Jesus says in this New International Version that he has come so that um, people can have life to the full. Other translations call that the abundant life or life more abundantly, but a full life, right? An abundant life. So Jesus tells the Pharisees here that he is the, the gate or the door same sort of difference. He's the entryway, the entry point to an abundant life. It's through him. It's not through the fountain of youth. It's not through super beets or uh, Carter's liver pills or whatever else. It is through Jesus. He is the door or the gate to this life abundant. And so you know, these items we take as a society, pills, drinks, fountain of youth, whatever, whatever those are, 
they're fine. They make us feel better. It's okay if we take those things and we feel better because of them. But those man-made items do not give us life more abundantly. Jesus says he is the gate. He is the door to that. And I take that to mean it's Jesus' wisdom, his teachings, uh, his uh, advice he gives to us on how to live our life, his, uh, if you might even call it, his best practices for, for living. Jesus gives us these. And when we follow those, that opens the door to life more abundantly. We get to go in, we get to go out. So, but critics, and there's always critics, will say, uh, critics of Jesus or this message, will say, what does Jesus know about abundant life? Um, they'll say that Jesus in his own life didn't have much abundance. He didn't even own a house. He didn't even own his own donkey. He had to walk wherever he went. And, and folks will say that Jesus in his own ministry didn't exhibit abundance. But that's a wrong take because abundant life is not material things. We know that. Uh, you can have a car and a house and that's not abundance. I know plenty of people, and you do too, who have very nice cars and very nice homes and they're very miserable on the inside. That's not abundance. And so if you ask me, you know, what is abundance? What does that mean? You know, the way I look at it, an abundant life is a life that's filled with joy, with love, uh, with happiness, with contentment. You know, this is life more abundantly. Because isn't that what truly matters the most, right? To, to have an existence where, that we can love one another, give love, receive love, give joy, receive joy, laugh with somebody and they laugh with us, right? Contentment. Isn't that what life is all about? Isn't that what we all strive for? Isn't that life more abundantly to live it that way? And by that definition, Jesus had plenty of abundance. You know, we don't read it so much in scripture directly, but I do feel like Jesus exhibited joy um, very frequently and, and openly, right? He would be joyful when around his family, such as at the wedding at Cana. You know, he would be joyful with his mom, his brothers, his sisters, uh, Joseph, his dad, joyful with his disciples as they walked on the road, joyful with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus right? Loving, of course, Jesus's unconditional love that he gives to all, right? That's life-changing. Jesus had an abundant life, joy, love, even for his enemies, right? Contentment. He had true abundance, and he's showing us how we can have it too. He says, I am the gate. You can come in and have it as well. And so as I think about that, you know, the, the, the truth about that, um, Jesus reminds us that the abundant life is available and the only way we're going to get to it is through here, ourself. No one's going to give it to us. No one's going to say on a silver platter, here's some abundance. Here's, here, take it. No, no, it doesn't work that way. Christ is within us. The Spirit of Christ dwells in us. That's what Scripture tells us. And because Christ dwells within us, we have the ability and the responsibility to find that abundant life. The gate's open. Just walk through it. Christ equips us with truth from heaven's realm, from God divine truth. Jesus shows us how to do it, loving unconditionally and being a people of joy and contentment. Now, it's up to us to walk through the gate and live it ourselves. 
I think of it like this. Um, those of you who have, who have been around these parts, South Central Kentucky for a while, you'll remember a theme park in Nashville called Opryland, right? Uh, Opryland theme park. And when I was a boy, my family, we were, you know, we, we, we lived in Smith's Grove. Once a year, sometimes twice, but at least once, we would go down to Opryland. Uh, me, my brother, neighbors, kids, we had a great time. What I remember the most about that is getting down to Opryland and being outside the gate, the entry gate, where they sold the tickets, waiting for my you know, mom or dad to buy the tickets. And that's, get, that gate is there, and I, I'm thinking to myself, boy, once I get through that gate and get in this place, it's going to be fun. Uh, roller coaster, the log flume, cotton candy. Um, they had that, remember if you were there, the, uh, the chair lift that went from one side of the park to the other. But I had to get through that gate first to experience it. And once we got the ticket, bam, it, we were turned loose inside Opryland and had a great time. There's, a, there's another kind of gate that Jesus um, talks about and opens for us. It's a gate that doesn't let you into Opryland. It lets you into a place much more profound. Uh, Opryland you visit for a day. The place that Christ opens for us to enter is a place that, as we read, is like a pasture, right? It's, it's, it's always present for us. It doesn't go away when the day ends. The place that Christ opens up for us to walk into this abundant life, this life more full, all we have to do is find it within ourselves to have the desire, the prayer, the dedication to follow Jesus as he beckons us through. Because once we enter into this place that Christ has opened for us, there is life abundant there. Yeah, the world will still assail us. The world will still uh, pour cold water on us whenever it can. But once we pass through those gates, we'll always have access to true joy, to give it and to receive it. True love, to give and to receive. Contentment that can never be snatched from us, no matter what the world does. These things are there. This is the pasture, pasture that Jesus talks about. He beckons us in. We arrive there by listening to him. His voice still speaks to us through prayer, through the word. Again, the spirit of Christ is within us. Go forth today and um, walk through the gate that Jesus has opened for you. There is a place of abundance on the other side. The world will never, ever give it to you. Jesus mentions a lot in this passage, thieves and robbers. That's the world around you. They'll always try to snatch from you what little joy or love you may have. Put your faith in the one that shows us how to obtain joy and love and contentment forever that the world can never take away. The gate's open. Let's walk through it together. Please join me in prayer. We thank you, Lord God, today for this passage in John's Gospel. We give thanks for the Good Shepherd that shows us and leads us and nurtures us. We give thanks for the open gate that leads to the most greenest of pastures we've ever seen. We give thanks that we too can experience life more abundantly. And we do it through the leadership, through our following of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen.